In my family, I'm the only artist. My mom's side of the family kind of looks like this. They all work in insurance. And my dad's side of the family works in the medical field. So when it was my turn to apply to colleges and begin to decide what career I wanted to pursue, I ended up choosing nursing. And I didn't choose nursing because I was particularly passionate about the sciences. I think I chose it because I was very comfortable. I was very comfortable because I had grown up around this my entire life. And, but there's something wrong with this equation. Like I said, I'm an artist. And I think that this is a dilemma that many artists face more than other people. When you love math, you pursue math. When you love science, you pursue science. But when you love art, the path isn't so linear, and I'm a prime example of this. So it's safe to say that first year of nursing was very difficult for me. Um, after failing to accept myself, and after getting C minus after C minus, my parents, my poor parents, finally convinced me to stop pretending to be someone that I wasn't and to embrace who they thought I was all along, an artist. And I'm so glad that they pushed me because I began to surround myself with teachers and professors and students who embraced art in a way I had never experienced before. And they even told me that art too, like nursing, can save lives. And now here I am a year later pursuing exactly what it is that I love and embracing and being honest with myself every step of the way. And I'm here on behalf of Catalyst Arts Movement, but I'm not only here on behalf of the arts, I'm here on behalf of all catalysts, all people who put themselves out there in order to initiate change in the world. And first, what is a catalyst? This is something I actually did learn that first year in nursing school. But a catalyst is something scientifically that facilitates a reaction, and without it, it potentially wouldn't happen. And the, the cool thing about catalysts is that they're not just in your body or in your environment, they're all around you, and there are even people sitting right next to you. And an example that I would like to share of a catalyst is Black Lives Matter. Three women, Opal Tometi, Patricia Kohlers, and Alicia Garza, put their, put their minds together and use social media as a platform at first to grieve, but then they use social media in order to inspire an entirely new generation to fight for equality and justice. And I use this example because the great people of our nation, the scholars, the activists, the peacemakers, whoever they may be, they won't be remembered exactly because they solved the world's greatest problems, but more because they initiated the reaction and they started a solution. And I want to teach you guys how to be a catalyst today. First, I think you need to learn how to collaborate. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my amazing team, who's actually sitting right there. But without these girls, we were three young girls starting this movement to change the world with our ideas. And soon we expanded, and I learned something new from every single one of our new members. Whether it be Avra, or Angie, or Catherine, or Amy and Zach, or Zoe, or Nicholas, or Fed, every single one of them inspired me in a different way. They inspired me to be confident, to be bold, to be brave, to put myself out there, to be resilient, and to be real. And we wouldn't, we'd definitely not be here if it weren't for our mentors who inspired us every single step of the way. The people who believed in us before we believed in ourselves, the people who inspired us every single step of the way, and the people who told us to shoot for the moon and make them say no. And the second step, and this is a really hard one, especially for me, is to fail. In order to fail, all of history has told us that in order to succeed, you really have to fail. They've told us time and time again, but it still is difficult every single time. Take Walt Disney, for example. When he started out, his teachers thought he lacked imagination, which is ridiculous. Then there's Oprah Winfrey, and she was fired for being too emotionally connected to her stories. And even Albert Einstein, who we all know, and when we saw his beautiful face up here, everyone knew who he was. And his teachers growing up thought that he wouldn't amount to much. So although people say there isn't an equation for success, I think it looks a little more like this. You have to fail and fail and fail and fail, and then possibly succeed. And if you don't, that you try and fail and fail again. And then ultimately, you could find success. And I think you will. And my professor told me that success is a lot like digging for gold. You're digging, 
and you're digging, and every time you dig, it's a reminder that you haven't reached your goal. Every single dig, you're like, I'm, I'm not there yet, let's keep going. But ultimately, I'm not as scared of failure as I'm scared of, of not reaching, or sorry, I'm not as scared of failure as I am of giving up a foot before reaching the gold, a foot before reaching success. So ultimately, I hope you guys embrace your failures and let every dig, every attempt strengthen you because I think you will find success through that. And ultimately, I want you to do what you love and do it now. It seems like the easiest thing to do. Really, you're like, I love it, of course I'm gonna do it. I'm a prime example of this. I pursued nursing knowing I love art, but you have to do what you love. And when I started Catalyst Arts Movement with my friends, I heard this Chinese proverb, and it goes something like this. A man searched for fire with a lit lantern. Had he known what fire was, he would have cooked his rice much sooner. But this is your chance. You know what fire is. And what this means is that sometimes there's a fire within you that's fueling you. And it's so, part, so much a part of you that you don't know it's the reason that you're alive. And so ultimately, if you take anything from this talk, I really hope that it's that you believe that you, the reason you are so passionate about something is because it's the very reason you were meant to be on this earth. Your reason for being here is to pursue your passions. And I know I'm a catalyst, but I hope today that you all are catalysts. Thank you very much.